So moving on from prepress, let's talk about what files would be appropriate to send to the printer because prepress assumes that we've given the files to the commercial printer and they're ready to go and they're going to double check and make sure everything's present. And so in order for us to be the most successful when sending files to a commercial printer, we need to have consistency. There are certain files that a printer wants and certain files that a printer doesn't want. And we, as graphic artists, if we're all sending the same types of files, it makes the printer experts of those files or packages or file types, whatever they happen to be, and I'll go into detail about what those are. Um, and they're not trying to, to spend or waste their time figuring out what you're sending them. If we're all sending them the same types of files or the same types of packages, then they immediately know what to do when they receive the files and they can spend their time figuring out how they're going to get it onto the printing press. And so it's important to only give files to the printer that they work best with. And so for industry standard, we are going to provide them with either Quark Express files, Adobe InDesign files, or high resolution PDF files. And so I included Quark Express on there because I feel like, you know, they kind of get a bad rap these days. But you can provide a printing company with Quark Express files, which is the competitor to Adobe InDesign, which is what we're learning in this class. You can give them a properly packaged Adobe InDesign project or files. Or if you don't want to do that, you can always give them high resolution PDFs. However, if you're giving them high resolution PDFs, you are saying, I 100% know that I have done everything that I need to do before I give the files to you and I'm expecting you to just hit print and print the files. And so if you think that um, you might need them to like move the page numbers in or something like that so that they, um, they don't get cut off when the book is made or make minor adjustments, you're best off giving them properly packaged and designed files. If you were going to give them Quark files, it would be a collect for output and then you would get a package from Quark as well. And then within the files, like if you create an InDesign project that has 400 pages for a book and you're putting pictures inside, you must also include all print formats for your images and your colors and things like that. And so for printing, if you're going to use images, uh, TIFF files, EPS files, Photoshop files, Illustrator files, PDF files or high resolution PDF files would all be appropriate to use inside the InDesign project. You wouldn't want to use things like JPEGs or um, PNG files or GIF files because those are web file formats and they just have a completely different intention and they're really great for the web but they're really poor for printing. So what is a page layout program? This entire semester we're going to talk about Adobe InDesign and I will say it is a page layout program so it would be a good idea to know what a page layout program is. A page layout, layout program is a graphic art software application used to compile images, so I like to call it a compiler, uh, images, text, and artwork from various sources into one concise document for output. And I've changed this because it used to say printing. We're preparing something for print, but we're not. We're preparing something for output or publishing. And publishing is the communication of a message to a mass audience. Um, and mostly that's printing, right? This entire semester, we're going to prep things for printing for the most part. But InDesign and other page layout software programs are amazing these days. And you can actually prep things for digital outputs. So if you go to InDesign and you open uh, a document and you choose File Export, you'll see just a slew of digital output options that you could export to. You could make web files like PNGs and JPEGs. You could make HTML if you're trying to code it somewhere. You can export it to Flash and then you could open your file in Flash and do some more editing. You can make EPUBs, you can make apps and things like that right from inside InDesign. But the idea of any of these software goes back to being a layout program. And so you're going to use all the software programs at your leisure to the best of their ability. So if you need to edit a photo, you're going to go to Photoshop, edit that photo, and do the best that Photoshop can do with that photo. And if you're going to make a logo or something like that, you're going to do that in Illustrator, and you're going to make the best logo in Illustrator. But when you have to bring them all together into a layout, whether it's a poster or a bookmark or a book or something like that, when you want to lay it out so that it's a, a comprehensive design, not just assets for a design, you're going to compile them together in a page layout software program like InDesign. So these page layout programs are important. They're amazing. And ever since we had electronic publishing, we have had this idea that we could create things using page layout software. We could compile them together. And so this is, again, this is just my opinion. Um, page layout programs are important because they increase our organization. They make it so easy to create an organized package that I can send to a printer that 
all the work that I used to spend as a traditional graphic designer, assembling mock-ups and physical images and things like that and making sure that nothing fell, physically fell out of the package, I don't have to do that anymore. I just have to make sure I pre-flight and that I'm making good decisions along the way. And when I'm done and I hit save, I just have to choose file and package and it will package it for me and create this nice handy dandy little grouping that I can send to a commercial printer. Uh, we also like them for compatibility for the same reasons that I said back here when we have the software programs and what files that we're going to send to a commercial printer. If we're all sending the same types of files, and there's like three or four different options, right? If we're all sending those same types of files and same types of packages, the second somebody at the printer opens it, they look at it and they know if it's right or wrong, right? When we open an enzyme package, we know if it's properly packaged or not. And then you can go through and make sure you have your images and your your uh, fonts and things like that. But if I, we're all sending different types of files, every time somebody opens the file they have to figure out how to use that file and how to work with that file and how to translate that file for what they need. When I worked in commercial printing in New Jersey, um, we had a client that would send us Microsoft Publisher files. And they're just really difficult to use because one, on the graphic design side, it really limits what you can do, but they weren't really graphic designers, they just wanted a newsletter. And then when you give it to us, so it's like, well, what do you do with it? Like, we have to have publisher to be able to open it. And then once we open it, we have to figure out how to convert it to a file format that we can work with, probably a PDF. But you have all these intermediate steps just to get it to the point where now you can start working with the file. If everybody sends the same stuff, they're compatible. We can open it in different locations. We can make changes, and we kind of know how to, to work with that. Um, also, the file size for editing there's a, there's a G missing. I think it got cut off with my image here. Uh, the file size for editing of an InDesign file is going to be extremely low because nothing gets embedded into the document. What happens is we create little boxes, like on this little mock-up here. We create little boxes where things would go, and then we drop a low-resolution preview of whatever it is into the hole. And we say, this was edited in Photoshop, and it's saved in this folder. But I want it to go here in this background. So this guy and these people playing some sort of sport. That's not the picture. That is a low resolution preview of the picture that is linked to or shared um, on a folder. And so we're not embedding huge pictures. So if I have a 400 page document, I should be able to flip from page one to page 50 really fast by just click, 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 and flipping from page to page. If I had a document where all of the graphics were embedded inside the file, it could take forever to flip from one page to the next because the file size would be so huge. If you've ever tried to create a really big file in Photoshop, even if it's just like 11 by 17 and you have lots of layers and you're painting and you're doing lots of different stuff, um, when you try to like paint a brush stroke across the screen and you paint it and then you're done and then you slowly watch the brush go across from one side to the next kind of processing as it moves across, that's because there's too much going on in your document. The, Photoshop is running slow because it's doing so much and your file is so big. With InDesign, we don't really have that because the file itself is really small. We just have text inside it and we have boxes that have little placeholders of, of images that are saved somewhere outside of InDesign. And so it's, it's both a pro and a con, right? Because as we learned for the first project, if you break that link, it's missing and you can never find it again unless you know where it's at. But as long as you keep your links, your pictures connected, you have really low file size. And then consistency goes back with the compatibility. So we can open it from one computer to the next and then the printer or the commercial printer or even our, our colleague who's opening our files. The consistency of getting the same things over and over, it lowers the learning curve of figuring out what to do with the files when you get them. Instead of me figuring out what the file is and what I should be doing with it, I just open it and I immediately know, you know, this is what uh, I should expect, I should have links and I should have fonts and I should have text and I can go about doing my job instead of figuring out how to get to a point where I could start my job.